guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. Today, we are in the new 2020 Ford Echo Sport courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. And so I'm in this one today though because this very well may be the very most affordable way you can get four wheel drive in an SUV. And not only that, it's 12 degrees out here in Pennsylvania today. I got heated seats on, I got my heated steering wheel. So it is very possible you can get quite a few features on this thing as well. So what do you say, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Echo Sport. First one being the S starting at $19,995, SE starting at $23,450, Titanium for $26,265, and lastly the SES, which actually is the one we are in today. This one is going to start at $27,380. And so if you were curious, that was all pricing for the front wheel drive with the exception of the SES coming standard with four wheel drive. For those first three trim levels, however, to add four wheel drive to any of those simply add $1,595. And so if you put that together with the S trim level, that gives you $21,590 for a four wheel drive SUV. And of course that does not include dealer discounts or any kind of factory rebate. So it is 100% very possible you can get four wheel drive on this SUV for under $20,000. And that is a heck of a deal, let me tell you. But when it comes to the power plant, there are actually two different engine setups available for the Echo Sport. First one being a one liter turbocharged three cylinder coming standard on the S, SE, and titanium trim levels. This one puts out 123 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 125 pound feet of torque, once again, available at 6,000 rpm again sent to front wheels or all wheels to a six-speed automatic giving you mpg numbers coming in at 27 in the city 29 on the highway of course taking regular unleaded fuel but then there is the other engine setup the one that comes standard for the ses and optional on the titanium being a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder this one that we currently have today puts out 166 horsepower available at 6500 rpm 149 pound feet of torque available at 4,500 RPM, power sent to all four wheels through that intelligent four wheel drive system through a six speed automatic. This one comes in at 23 MPGs in the city, 29 on the highway. Once again, though, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so that before we do any kind of acceleration in the Echo Sport, first they want to mention there is a sport driving mode. It is not a button setup that you typically find on a lot of other vehicles out there these days, but it is just part of the shifter. So if you push the shifter all the way to the back, that is gonna give you that sport driving mode. It did just immediately downshift for me. So it is gonna hold the RPMs at a much higher level, of course. And the cool thing about this mode is you can also actually shift through the gears yourself. And so the way to go about doing that, there are buttons on the side of the shifter. So if you did wanna manually shift through the gears yourself, that is certainly an option. As I just shifted down to fifth gear, I could shift back up to sixth gear. So that button is actually located on the side. And really, you're probably not gonna use that all that much, except you may need it for engine brake if it starts to snow outside so that's probably more than likely why it's there but anyways having covered all that now what do you guys say let's do a quick little acceleration test in this one and let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 ford echo sport here up to speed all right a little bit of a rolling start here but here we go dang this thing's loud <laughs> Not bad. You're not going to have any issues merging onto the highway, but dang, this engine gets loud when you really put the pedal to the metal here. With the NA inline four cylinder, you're not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway. Certainly not the fastest thing in the world, but it's pretty much as expected for the Echo Sport. So, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so you will find, of course, four wheel disc brakes coming standard on all trim levels of the Echo Sport. As far as the braking fill goes, it's been perfectly fine for me today. So certainly no issues with bringing this one to a stop. Touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a strut type front suspension in the back, a torsion beam rear suspension. And I do want to mention there is a sport tuned suspension if you were to go with the SES trim level that we have today. Since I mentioned it, as far as the steering feel goes, it is actually quite nice in the Echo Sport. I got to admit, just got done driving the uh, Nissan Rogue not too long ago. That is definitely a looser steering feel, but I do like that at very minimum. This one is heavier than the Nissan Rogue. 
so I do like the weighted steering wheel a little bit in this one. It's not the heaviest, but it's not as heavy as my Mustang, of course, but it certainly is a nice weight to it. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine for me today, so definitely no issues there. I told you going cabin noise a little bit. There is acoustic laminated front glass for actually all trim levels, so that's definitely a plus. So as far as the exterior wind noise goes, that is quite nice, but I will say, again, the engine noise is quite pronounced when you really hit the gas, otherwise it's really not a big deal. And also when you're sitting at a stoplight or a red light, I did notice you can hear a bit of like rattling in the engine or whatever the case so there's a little bit of that too but other than that the wind noise is definitely on point so you're not going to have any issues with that but touching on visibility again it comes down to the shape really when it comes to visibility so because of the shape of the echo sport i can see perfectly fine out the back so visibility is 100 percent on point there do want to mention rain sensing windshield wipers coming standard for the titanium and ses trim level so that is one of those deals where they're going to automatically turn on for you when the echo sport detects rainfall so it's one last thing you have to worry about better focus on keeping your eyes on the road so that's really a safety feature in itself there also windshield wiper de-icer coming standard on the se trim level and up and of course we had that on first thing this morning when it was 12 degrees out when i first turned the echo sport on here so that is definitely a big plus as well but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 ford echo sport all right and here she is you guys in one of the cooler locations i think i found recently <laughs> this is the 2020 ford echo sport let's go ahead and start up front here all right so starting with the front grill there is a black front grill that will come standard on the s and ses trim levels that of course is currently what you're looking at right now chrome horizontal bars you will find on the se and titanium trim levels and so the s and ses being more sportier trim levels se and titanium being more I don't know, I guess you could say upscale or luxury trim level, so to speak. But to the sides, halogen quad beam reflector headlights coming standard with the S. Halogen quad beam projector headlights coming standard with the SE trim level and up. LED signature lighting coming standard across the board. And you will find fog lights just below if you were to go with the SE trim level and up. And I did want to mention in addition to that, currently what you guys are looking at right now, there are black projector surrounds on those headlights. So black housings essentially coming standard with the SES trim level. And so of course with the SES being the most sportiest trim level of the Echo Sports, I guess that kind of makes sense but let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one now and so when it comes to the side you will find no roof rails if you were to go with the s trim level you will get black roof rails for the se and ses that is of course what you're looking at right now and you will find silver roof rails if you were to go with the titanium trim level and of course looking towards the back rear privacy glass is going to come standard with the se trim level and up it will not come standard on the s so i did want to mention that power adjustable black side mirrors coming with the s trim level you will get body colored side mirrors with integrated turn signals with the se and titanium and gloss black side mirrors with integrated turn signals with the ses and of course since we had the black exterior today you're not going to notice that contrast but if we were to have a white exterior or any other color you will still get those gloss black side mirrors with the ses trim level so i did want to emphasize that but taking a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch aluminum alloys with the s and se trim levels 17 inch aluminum alloys with the titanium and ses again what you're looking at right now and i did want to add to that chrome belt line molding coming with the titanium titanium trim level and black door handles coming with the s trim level and so you will get body color tour handles of course with all other trim levels besides the s but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back on this one you will find a uh, shark fin extended antenna up top there just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper all of that coming standard across the board of course and i do want to add to that there is a more pronounced rear spoiler if you were to go with the SES trim level kind of a more aggressive appearance I guess you could say so do want to show that to you guys a little bit but so anyways down below you guys know I always have to do it there is a single exhaust outlet pointed towards the ground so I think you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip Alright, 
getting soon now since we are still around back. First thing I wanted to mention to you guys, this is one of the coolest opening rear lift gates that are out there right now when it comes to SUVs and crossovers. Let me explain why here. When it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is no button on the key fob. We do have the SES trim level is the highest trim level. Yet still, there is no button on the key fob, but that's fine. There is, however, a hidden button to open that rear lift gate within the passenger side rear tail light. It is kind of a spy or secret agent kind of way of opening up this lift gate. I personally absolutely love it. There's nothing wrong with being different, and this different is very cool. So essentially, that is how you were going to go ahead and open this rear lift gate up. Once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 20.9 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, those rear seats, of course, do fold down, bumping the cubic feetness up to 50 cubic feet even. So decent amount of space, actually, for the size of the Echo Sport, honestly. And of course, in that cargo area, you can find four cargo floor tie-down anchors. There's cargo lighting, a cargo cover, adjustable cargo shelf, if you were to go with the SE trim level and up, and just overall a decent amount of space back there. Then make your way to the rear legroom. That is going to come in at 36.7 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Do want to also mention though, for all trim levels, even the base trim level, there is a rear center armrest with cup holders. A lot of other manufacturers will add that rear center armrest with cup holders to the upper trim levels, but it does come standard on all trims for the Echo Sport. That's definitely a big plus. Front seat bat, Mac pockets, of course, coming standard as well. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats coming standard with the s trim level se is going to add to that six-way power driver's seat with heated front seats that's how you're going to get the heated seats with the se trim level and up titanium is going to add a perforated leather finish and the se is going to add active x seating and so this essentially is which of course you're what you're looking at right now but it's going to be a durable stain resistant synthetic seating material and of course it's got leather on the exterior of that as well well, so that's kind of cool. I actually do like the seats. They are quite comfortable, especially with the heated seats. I definitely am a big fan of that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the steering wheel. It is a tilt steering wheel. It is not telescoping, but overall I was still able to find my perfect driving position, but it is leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up, and it will come heated again with the titanium and the SES trim levels. And I absolutely love that you can get a heated steering wheel on this one, especially since we are in the teens today outside so quite cold but nonetheless let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your ford logo on the one side and when you flip it over it's a pretty basic key lock and unlock so did want to mention though you really don't need to take the key out of your pocket it is all keyless entry with a push button start if you were to go with the se trim level and up at least s trim level you you're gonna have to take the key out of your pocket but still push button start coming with the se trim level and up so all i am going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button which is actually located just to the right of the gauge display there and so once started up tachometer is all the way on your left speedometer is on your right there is a small digital display front and center which is pretty cool and to control what is on that digital display simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there and so that's going to give you a bunch of information actually how many miles you have left until you hit empty of course trip a trip b there is a digital speedometer readout if you wanted to go that route of course you have a compass up there outside temperature telling us it's freaking cold today you have a picture of the echo sport if you would rather display that i found that pretty cool as well but overall it's got pretty much everything you need up on those gauges but touching on overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to come with the se trim level and up that's pretty cool that the se a, a lower trim level i guess you could say gives you a power moonroof but here's one of my favorite parts about the interior quality ambient lighting with several colors actually coming standard with the titanium and the ses so there's actually seven different colors you can choose from up there so i did find that pretty cool so i'm going to try to show that to you guys right now i'll give you all the colors so you can see what they look like but it is going to be displayed throughout the vehicle perhaps the best part to show you guys right now though is in the cup holders but i can see it's around the footing area as well so i do love when manufacturers put ambient lighting it really allows you to customize and make the car your own so that's always a plus 
us. But of course you have an overhead sunglass holder up top here, just above the passenger side glove box, you have a little storage area with a rubberized tray in there so things don't slide around. Speaking of the glove box, it is definitely a smaller glove box, I will say, but then again, the vehicle is a bit smaller as well, but there is a second owner's manual area just above that glove box as well, so that's always a plus. Just in front of the shifter, you have another little area with a rubberized bottom so things don't slide around, perhaps the perfect area to store your cell phone once you connect it using one of the two USB charging ports, again, right above that. There is a 12 volt power outlet just to the right of the shifter, just behind that. You have a little tray area as well as your dual cup holders there. Another little cubby area behind the cup holders. And of course you actually have a little bit of storage just underneath of the center armrest between the driver and passenger. When I say a little bit, I do mean a little bit of storage. This is perhaps the narrowest, deepest kind of storage I've ever seen. It's it's just interesting. There's a little tray you can actually pull out with a uh, pen or pencil holder in there, but it is very extremely narrow, but it is yet very deep. So that is kind of cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display because this is perhaps the main, the biggest new feature for the 2020 Ford Echo Sport. And so that base trim level, the S trim level is still gonna give you the 4.2 inch display screen. However, with the SE trim level, and up and this is the big change because previously the SE also gave you the 4.2 inch display screen you now will get an 8 inch color touchscreen display aka Ford Sync 3 system again for the SE titanium and SES trim levels where previously the SE again gave you the smaller infotainment but either way with both systems you do get Bluetooth and audio streaming however if you go with the Sync 3 you will get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay meaning if you have a smartphone simply hook it up to the Echo Sport and therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that tech display as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs and there's a couple other compatible apps as well factory navigation is actually going to come standard with the titanium and SES trim levels of course you can check out your radio settings up there as well and by the way when it comes to the sound system you will get six speakers if you were to go with the S or SE trim levels however if you were to go with the titanium or SES that we have today you will get a 10 speaker banging Olsen sound system so I do believe you guys know what we have to do next let's go ahead and turn on the radio here see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. I admit, I feel like Elenium's been on fire lately. There's so much nice stuff coming out, but dang, that sound system was on point, especially considering the size of the Echo Sport. Plenty of bass for the size of this thing, plenty of clarity, plenty of loudness, really a well done sound system by Bang & Olufsen, as expected really. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Echo Sport in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags, but also driver and passenger knee airbags up front. That definitely doesn't come standard on every SUV out there. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system comes standard. But did wanna mention the SE trim level is gonna add a reverse sensing system, meaning when you're backing up and you're getting too close to an object, the Echo Sport's gonna kinda beep at you, letting you know you're getting too close to an object so you don't go hitting anything, that's always a Plus. And the titanium and SES trim levels are also going to give you a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, meaning those little car icons in the side mirrors, so you don't go turning into anybody in your blind spot. And so that about rounds up this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.